Mac Voices listeners and viewers. Our friends at Squarespace have a great do-it-yourself website builder that allows you to make a website or blog in just a few minutes. Squarespace gives you a free domain name, handles all the hosting, and has 24-hour customer support. Everything on the platform is drag and drop, so it's incredibly easy to use. The templates are customizable to your own look and feel and let your content do all the talking. Additionally, you can switch to a different template at any time. Go to squarespace.com slash macvoices to start a free trial. Use the offer code macvoices2, that's macvoices and the number 2, when you decide to purchase and you'll receive a 10% discount. Thanks to Squarespace for sponsoring this edition of Mac Voices. Okay, good afternoon Mac World, I World. Thank you for coming. My name is Chuck Joyner. We are doing an edition of Mac Voices, my audio and video podcast. If you want to see more, you can check out macvoices.com or macvoices.tv. And we want to thank uh, Mac World for giving us this little booth to uh, meet with you all. We appreciate it. I'm happy to have for a guest for this session, Mr. Jeff Barrow. He is the founder and CEO of Connected Data, who are making a little device called the Transporter that I've been fortunate enough to beta test and I really like, and so I want to welcome Jeff Barrow. Jeff, it's great to see you. Thanks for having us, Chuck. Hey, it's good good to see you, and, and there it is, the transporter. Here it is. I, I love this little device. So tell everyone what a transporter is. Sure. Well, a transporter basically tries to make it very simple to move files around. Whether you're sharing files with friends, whether you're collaborating on files with work colleagues, whether you just want to move files offsite for backup, or maybe you're away from the files and you want to come back and access them. Whatever the reason is that you want to move files around the place, the transporter is here to solve it. Okay, now you know what I'm going to ask next. I've got Dropbox. Sure. Why do I need Transporter? That's a great question. The Dropbox is a great service. But the reason for Transporter is that the cloud isn't a solution for everything, right? So there are, there are a whole bunch of cloud services that can help with some of these problems. But they suffer from a number of different issues that make them so that they're, they're good for certain use cases, but not really broadly applicable. First of all, there's privacy. You know, there's been a whole bunch of stories about cloud privacy issues, which I think we're aware of. You know, it's understood that, uh, that from a legal or medical standpoint, the cloud breaks privacy from a legal standpoint. And, you know, people, some people have very sensitive data, or I certainly do, like my photo collection, which are just not comfortable putting in the cloud. And I think most everybody has at least some data that they don't, they don't feel comfortable with. The second issue with cloud storage is super expensive. So it's uh, somewhere in the region of seven or eight times more expensive than storage you buy yourself. So you're paying a big premium. And because of that, you have to decide just what to store in the cloud. You certainly can't store everything you have in, the, in your digital lifestyle in the cloud. And finally, simplicity. Cloud solutions are typically based for a particular use case. You know, for Dropbox, it might be sharing some documents. For something like Carbonite, it might be for backing up your hard drive. But you can't use Carbonite for sharing documents, and you can't use Dropbox because of the capacity of it versus cost for storing large amounts of data. So they're for particular use cases. So what we want to do with Transporter was a solution that's completely private. So the data's only stored on the transporters, it's only stored where you can say, and nobody else, including our company, has any visibility into your data. So it's 100% private, so that's important. Secondly, we wanted a buy and own. So no subscriptions, no signing up, no renting storage from other people. You just buy it, you buy the capacity you want, and then it's yours, for, it's yours forever. There's no subscription or ongoing fees to pay. So you know exactly what you're paying the day you buy it, and that's all taken care of. And then finally, from a simplicity standpoint, what we wanted was a product that solved all of these use cases with one simple interface. Because there was no real reason why you needed all these different services to do these different things. And we think we've come up with a solution that basically allows you to do all these things, sharing, collaborating, uh, you know, backing up, remote access, all with one really simple interface. And, and simple interface is a, a point I want to make because as a beta tester, I've watched it go from pretty good and a little rough to a lot more refined, adding a lot more features uh, to you know now ready for prime time, ready for people to actually use it. But the privacy aspect is that the privacy and the cost are the biggest things. I love Dropbox, but now I've got my own private Dropbox service that has a lot more capacity and a fixed cost associated with it. That's exactly right. So, uh, so with Transporter, you know, you literally get it, you plug it into the network, and from that point on, which you never have to manage the devices themselves. Mm -hmm. You just come to our central web service, you can create folders to share with other people, just connected folders, and then just email them invites from the website. 
following that, once they accept the invite, they have a folder on their computer, or computers, you have a folder on your computer or computers. Any changes you make in the folder reflect on theirs, renames, adding files. Any changes they make, renames, adding files, reflect on yours. So it's just like everybody's sharing the same hard drive, which is the simplest thing we can think of. You know, you're all used to using Finder on the Mac, and you know, and moving files around on that. If you can do that, that's all you need to know to operate Transporter. Now let's be real clear about this. I have, I, I buy one transporter, okay, and then I basically have my own private Dropbox. I don't have to have necessarily a second transporter at the office. It, I can set it up to sync to a drive on my office computer, just like I would Dropbox. Absolutely. So with transporter, you can got the option of sharing with people who have transporters or sharing with people who don't have transporters, and either one's just fine with us. So let's say you and a friend are collaborating on Rich Media. You're have a podcast, a video <laughs> podcast you want to edit. Rick. What an idea. What an Something idea. like that, right? Then probably you both want to have a transporter, you've got the large media files on, you're editing it locally and it's super fast for you. Right. But you know, if you've got a family member you want to share some photos with, or you've just got a few documents you want to share with a client or somebody you're working with or collaborating, you could send them an invite, no need for them to have their own transporter. They'll still pop the folder right up on their desktop, they can read and write and add content to it. And then if they're caching it locally, which they can do, it'll sync back over the internet to the transporter. Or if they're not, it'll just come right back and access your transporter over the internet. So. Jeff, um, how about the next step, iOS devices, because that's the other place that a lot of us would like to access data from, but we don't have that massive storage. I mean, I know Apple just came out with a bigger iPad, but it's still not big enough. No, no. So we have uh, iOS apps for the iPhone and iPad. They're under review currently. We hope they'll be released shortly. Mm -hmm. And basically, they allow you to get access to the data on your transports wherever you are. And so, and same with the computers. We should say that, make that clear. You don't have to have a transporter with you to access it. You know, the coffee shop, open up your computer, grab your iPad. It's going to connect right back across the internet to your transporter. If you've got one at the office and one at home, you'll pick the one that's got the fastest link to and it'll access that one, right? So with the desktop app, on a folder-by-folder -folder basis, you can choose either to cache the information locally, like Dropbox, so the files just sync up and down. You always have a copy with you if you're not connected, or just have a connection that goes right back to the transporter. So if I've got a terabyte of movies, maybe I just want to access that over a remote connection. If I've got 50 gigs of PowerPoints I absolutely need with me all times. So I can have that syncing with my, with my computer. The iPad is just the same. All the files are listed, whether you have them with you or not. You can click on them and they just download to the iPad. From that app, you can either move them into other apps via our app sharing menu, or move uh, files back from other apps back into our app and then upload it back to the transporters again. Let's talk about security. We're, we're sitting here touting the fact that your data is not residing on someone else's servers, right. which is a good thing. Yep. But we're still moving data back and forth. How yep. secure is it during that transit, especially when you say, oh, open up your iPad or your MacBook at a coffee shop? That's always, and it seems to be becoming a bigger concern today. We use AS-256 encryption. It's for military-grade encryption to move the data. So literally, as the data is moving from your laptop over the coffee shop Wi-Fi and back to the transporter, it's completely encrypted. So you don't have to worry about people snooping on it or sniffers on the internet snooping it. Everything's private. The devices are private. They're only located where you want them to be. The data's only located where you want it to be. And the actual transfers are all encrypted as well. So it's as private as we can make it. Now, the other issue that I can think of is backup. I put some sensitive data on my transporter. It's obviously, if I'm sharing it to another computer, that's great. I've kind of got an automatic off-site backup. But I also have you know, this little thing, and I don't want to lose what's on there. What's the simplest way to address backup of a transporter? Well, what's really nice about transporters is you can have these cached folders. So you can back things up without ever having to back them up. So, you know, the, the trouble with backup software, for me at least, right, is um, uh, like I've been using ProsSync for years. Love it, great piece of software. But when something goes wrong, it needs me to go and get involved and set it up or I have to set up syncs and I have to choose times and things. Right. And I, I just don't get around to maintaining it, right? So the nice thing about, uh, about the transporter is you can set up a cached folder on your hard drive and you just work it on your computer. And then all of the changes that you're making are going to sync either across the internet or across your LAN to the nearest transporter that you own, and then from there out. So let's uh, think about my iPhone, but my iPhoto setup. I'm working on iPhoto on my SSD on my iMac, right? So I'm not working over a network to a NAS or on a remote driver or anything. I'm just working on my Mac. As I'm making changes, because the iPhoto library is in a connected folder, those changes are replicating over my LAN super fast to my transporter, okay? okay? So I can close my laptop up and just get going. 
And then the transporter's worrying about transferring those changes across the internet to my second backup transporter that I keep at the office. And it's doing that so I don't have to. I can just get on with my life and not worry about it. So, so I really wouldn't necessarily need to set up a sync folder to a second hard drive or a Drobo or something of that nature just because of the way that I'm, I'm actually, here we go, we, we keep using the Dropbox analogy, that's one everyone understands. If I take a file and, sh and a folder and share it from my in my Dropbox, I can work on that data in there, but it's syncing up. Right. In this case, I don't even have to put that folder in the Dropbox folder on my Mac, I can just use the Photos folder like you said on an iPhoto, it's automatically doing the thing to go to, up to the transporter and out to the next transporter. Do I have it right? Uh, well, we have a connected there folder. Right. And you create you know, an iPhoto folder out wherever you want. You host your iPhoto library in that folder, which is just on your regular hard drive, right? And then it's going to constantly sync over the land to the transporter. And then from the transporter to wherever else you've targeted it to go to. You got it. So you've got this continuous offsite copy, but the beauty of it is you're never having to uh, actually, you know, start backup or worry about backing up or, or, you know, managing some backup. You literally just keep working on your hard drive just totally naturally to you. And it just takes care of everything else for you. I think the, the story that you have here about connected data is also an interesting one. You, you funded Transporter with a Kickstarter and it was immensely successful. It was kind of fun to watch. Thanks, Jack. Yeah, it was great. It was the first time... Um, so one of the things I didn't say about the team is we have the same founding team that founded a company called Drobo, uh, which some of the audience may be familiar with. Yeah. Well, one or two probably have a Drobo here, yeah. <laughs> so, you know, with Drobo, we wanted to make safe, expandable storage something that was just available to everybody. With Transport, obviously, we're solving, we're moving files around the world, trying to make that just as simple. So, you know, simplicity and ease of use is vitally important to us. That's good. And, and the Kickstarter thing, I mean, it was interesting to watch it. It started out fast, then it slowed down a little bit. Then at the end, it really ramped up and gave you a lot of funding to, uh, to bring us these yeah. products. We, we hit 250% of target. Uh, we had uh, 1,100 pre-orders on Kickstarter, which was just phenomenal. And, you know, the point with Drobo was we, back then there was nothing like Kickstarter, right? So this time we wanted to try it. It seemed interesting. And the thing that was best about it, obviously the money's great, but the thing that we liked best about the campaign was we got to interact with customers who were buying the product, which is when you're really emotionally committed to, to a product and you're trying to determine whether it's a good fit for you. We got to interact with those customers ahead of completing the product. So we got all that feedback, we could roll it in, we made a lot of changes you know, over the course of the campaign and course corrected a little bit on things we were doing, reordered some things, just based on that feedback. And normally in the past you had to launch a product then you found out, you know, what you've got right and what you've got wrong. You, know, you tried to get it right ahead of time, so, you know, you do surveys and testing. But with Kickstarter, you really get a lot of great feedback. So it's a phenomenal experience for us. That's great. And we should say the Transporter is officially launching here at the show. So this is the first time that it's really been available in public outside of the Kickstarter program. That's right. So, yeah, we launched here today at Macworld. It's, available, it's general availability and it's ready for order. So you can come to our website and you can order it there or order it from one of our partners. And if the people here want to learn a little more about it, I think they have a very long walk to your booth. <laughs> it's right there. Yeah, it's right, it's right, right there. there. It's right there. <laughs> yeah. Um, you know, we always have to ask about the price points. What kind of price points are there for the transporter and what configurations? Well, we have a show special, but uh, the regular MSRP on the product is $199 without a hard drive. If I just uh, flick it open here, you can just see that uh, you just add your own hard drive in. It's super simple. You just push the hard drive in a carrier, slide it in, and power the product up. So, you know, generally because of all the different offers and everything else, people can source hard drives cheaper than we can. We love that. You can get a base transporter for $199, fit any hard drive you want in there, any two and a half inch hard drive, and just be off. But if you want to get a pre-assembled one from us, that's fine. For uh, $299, we have a one terabyte. For $399, we have a two terabyte. So you can buy any one of those configurations. Jeff, talk for just a second too about um, how these are being assembled. You know, they're not, they're not sitting in a warehouse necessarily right now just waiting. They're actually maybe not quite assembled on an immediate basis, but pretty close to it. That's right, yeah. We have the base units shipped to our distributor here in the U.S., and then we ensure that the hard drives come from the U.S. and get fitted in the U.S. You know, people's day is vitally important, and you know, a big lesson for us in Drobo, which we've carried forward, is the quality of hard drives definitely vary geographically. So we want to make sure we get the best grade hard drives we can here locally in the country and have them fitted in the country just before shipping. 
So if you order a one terabyte hard drive from us, you know, assemble in, that literally gets fit just before the product gets shipped to you. And it's a good quality hard drive from open source. I think that's an interesting part of the story. You know, we all tend to think of things as manu pre-manufactured, and so if there's a problem with hard drives, well, now do I get one when that problem occurred or not? This will allow you a much better quality control and to respond to things a lot quicker as they change. Oh yeah, absolutely. And it's hard drive size has changed, capacity has changed. You know, the great thing is, you know, we can change the way people order, but customers can just go ahead and fit their own upgrade, and that's just fine. If you've got two transporters and you replace the hard drive with one, it's just going to pull the data right back from the other one. Yeah. So you can just go ahead and upgrade it. Yeah. The other thing I want to mention is the, uh, the design of this. Um, I, I like it because it does not take up more space. It's, it's a small footprint, so there's not more space on my desk or wherever I happen to have it. And, and it seems like, especially walking around a show like Macworld, there's now a lot of competition for my desktop real estate. Right. So, so you've gone vertical instead of horizontal. Yeah, we wanted to, we wanted to come up with a, with a simple design, something that's reasonably elegant. You know, if you're going to add something new to your desk, you want it to look nice. It's a shame this one's not lit up. It has a, a, a beautiful blue light, um, which you can turn off if you've got it in your bedroom or somewhere else, but generally there's beautiful blue light on it. Pulses gently if you're receiving data, so you get a visual indicator. If there's any issues, the hard drive's filling up, something else, you know, that'll reflect that. And, you know, the form of it, basically, is you can see if I take the drive off, it's like a single surface sort of wrapped around the drive, so it's the smallest amount of space you could have uh, containing the product. So we just want it to be small, elegant, something people will want to put out. If you want to put it in a closet next to the router, that's fine, obviously. <laughs> but if you want to put it out the desk, that's great too. No, I like to have it sitting there pulsing. I know it's doing something. Yeah, you can see something's going on, right? E exactly. So the website where people can go to learn all about it and place their orders. So you can go to filetransporter.com, all one word, or connecteddata.com. Either way, I'll bring you to our website. We've got videos on the website showing how you know, turn the product in action, talking about the product. We've also got a you know, page where you can read all about the different features and functionality of the product. And if you want, you can order right there from our website or get redirected to a partner that maybe you prefer to buy from. And you did mention a show special. We should probably touch on that too. Yes, 10% off at the show. Uh, the code is MacWorld2013, I think. So, uh, yeah, if you come to the website, enter the code, you can get 10% off. Jeff, congratulations on a great product, a, a great launch here at MacWorld. Thank you so much. I'm looking forward to working with my transporter even more now that it's out of beta. Thanks, Jack. It's great talking to you. Good to see you. Nice Take to care. See you too. Folks, this is Macworld. Uh, excuse me. This is yes. This is Macworld. iWorld 2013. I'm Chuck Joyner. This is Mac Voices. Thank you so much, all for uh, all of you who sat through the uh, discussion. We hope to see you back here. I'll be back here on Saturday at noon to do another session. I uh, will see you then. Thanks for watching. Mac Voices TV is part of the Mac Voices Group at macvoicesgroup.com. Advertising handled by Backbeat Media at backbeatmedia.com.